Pledge of Allegiance and our invitation. And our invitation is Dave Sniper and John Chris Green. And I got glasses on, so I'm looking for that one. It's hard to miss me. It's uh, hard to miss Chris. I like me. You have to shine a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Especially after we came through all that rain out there just a minute ago. I told them I wouldn't come in while it's raining. I won't keep it open with Anyway. Uh, Chris, if you will lead us in our prayer. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we do come before you tonight with humble hearts and spirit of thanksgiving for all the many blessings that you Continue to pour out of our county. Lord, well, we thank you for each one that's represented here. Lord, we thank you for watching over, keeping us out of harm's way. Lord, we thank you for the many freedoms that we enjoy. We thank you for the men and women who serve to protect those freedoms. We thank you for each one who has served and sacrificed. Lord, we thank you for this group tonight. As they sit in a position of leadership, I would ask that you would give them wisdom and discernment as they go about the business of our county. All this we ask you for all the day. When I talk about the water, I was actually going to make a judgment. I said it was a question. I think that judgment. Uh, other than the fact that I'm made out of sugar and I might melt coming in, I don't want you to know the difference. We were out you did not know. I got an email. Uh, uh, our next order of uh, business is to recognize any elected officials who are here tonight. If you are an elected official, please stand and be recognized. All right, and next uh, agenda item is the addition of veterans. If you are a veteran, would you please stand?
ten items to be presented for a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll make a motion to adopt it with adding two items. And a motion to motion with addition to two items. Second. Second. Mr. with addition to two items. Uh, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you very much. Let's see what we have. Citizen recognition. Anyone here who failed to sign up with the clerk but who would like to speak to the commissioners about any topic, please come up at this time, state your name and your address and the subjects that you'd like to talk about. And we will entertain that at this time. Anyone who would like to speak about any subject concerning citizens of Cleveland County or Cleveland County itself, please step up to the podium, name and address. Yes, Hearing none, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is the consent agenda. And I'll turn that over to our county manager, David Deere. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have six items for your consideration this evening. The first one, uh, one item A, is the tax collector's monthly report for the month of May. At the end of May, County General Real and Personal Property Taxes were 97.49% collected, slightly ahead of last year's pace and exceeds our 97% budget goal with uh, one month left remaining to report. Item B is the Tax Assessor's Monthly Report for May 2013. During the month of May, we had property tax abatements in the amount of $13,179. We had property tax supplements in the amount of $14,970. Item C is a budget amendment and the workers' compensation insurance fund. We're asking you to appropriate $100,000 in workers' compensation fund balance to be used to cover claims settlements. Item D is a budget amendment in the cooperative extension department. We're asking you to accept $1,680 in registration fees to be used in the Master Gardeners program. <coughs> he is a request from the Sheriff's Office to present Francina Ann Jones her service weapon upon her retirement after 30 years of service as a law enforcement officer. And item F, the one that you just added, is also a budget amendment in the Workers' Compensation Fund. We're asking you to accept $350,000 in insurance funds to settle some workers' compensation claims. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have to say. Commissioner, you've heard the uh, manager speak about the uh, consent agenda. At this time, are there questions about any topic on that agenda or any deletion of the motion approved? Vice Chair Ball. I'll second. Uh, Allen. All in favor of the consent agenda, please raise your right hand. Oh, now we come to the good time. As always, it is um, a pleasure to be able to recognize uh, special things that go on in the county, not only the events, but especially the people who are impacting the county in a great way. And tonight, I was glad to have the <coughs> come up and present uh, us the uh, presentation of Blue Ridge Music Heritage Book. Cameron, good to see you again. Thank you. And actually, Brown, do you want to come up and join us? Just oh, going to hang out back there. Okay. We are here this evening to share some very exciting news. And some of you have heard it before, but we have the official evidence in hand, which is that Cleveland County has been added to the Blue Ridge Music Trails. How many of you all have heard of the Blue Ridge Music Trails? Okay. They have completely revamped and expanded, and not only has Cleveland County been included in the Blue Ridge Music Trails, but we are a hub. And so what that means is that there are five districts, and Cleveland County is the hub for the Flint Hill Special District. And we are so excited about this because it's one more great reason for visitors to come to Cleveland County. And we all know once they come, they stay in our hotels, they eat our restaurants, they pay taxes, they help people have jobs. So it's just one more way that we can see great positive economic impacts in the community. And Sam Lowry is up here as well. Um, we're both here on behalf of Destination Cleveland County and board and staff. And you want to pick that up and um, present that? Tell them what this is. All right. This is the book. 
and we'd like to present that to you. And I'll read the uh, inscription on that panel vote in here. And it's to the Cleveland County Board of Commission Commissioners. We hope you share our excitement that Cleveland County has been included in the Blue Ridge Music Trails as a music heritage hub. Warm regards, the staff and board destination for Cleveland County, June 19, 2013. It is marked uh, where we start, and uh, it's titled Clifton Special. It starts out with Earl Scruggs, and then it goes on several pages and goes to Don Gibson and Don Gibson Theater. So, hope you enjoy this. And on behalf of Destination Cleveland County, uh, we present you this book. And I will just say that um, the book. The trails are based on the Appalachian Regional Commission. You all know what that is. For anybody else who may not know what that is, uh, I'm going to describe it as political wars, um, which we are not part of the ARC. Cleveland County is not. But in spite of that, because of several years of going to Blue Ridge Heritage Area Conferences, which is one of the partners that has created these trails, we have been included in. Um, so we're sort of the um, adopted children, I guess. And so we are, we're just, we're really excited and proud for our county that this musical therapy is going to be like this. So we thank you all for all that you do to help us keep getting the word out there. You may, I'm sorry, but uh, one of you, Dan, mm -hmm. one of you, I, let me see how long it is. It's, it's long. It's pretty long. It's, it's long. long. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a seat. I won't say if you like to read it to the commissioners, but uh, we'll, we'll, well, put it, we'll put this yeah, in all of them. Well, thanks, and uh, so the commissioners can look at it. And thank you for the presentation of this book and all the work that you guys are doing. Uh, we value our champions. Thank you. <coughs> and great. And we look forward to this opening and all. Before the end of the hearing, we stay tuned for the grand opening dates. You ready? Sure do. <laughs> thank you very much for this. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, commissioners, any questions that you would like to apply? Comments. Thank you very much. I look forward to the opening and uh, the excitement that comes with it. And I do want to be on your trail. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, great work. You continue. We look forward to the opening. It's going to be great. Thank you for all the work you've done. It is going to be a success. And it's going to go all people into the area that we come on. What, the, what makes things happen is people that are passionate about uh, topics or ideas. And it's obvious that from the stand, uh, Emily, Browning, I mean, you're all passionate about um, working to uh, make this a, uh, a better place, a better quality of life. And uh, we can't make you better. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've always said our champions want to make the Cleveland County successful. How do you want to say anything? Ricky Skaggs, two shows on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> we got people coming from far and wide. Don't miss it. Stand around and look up for the ticket. I'm looking forward to the opening. You got tickets for you, right? I do. I got tickets. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I guess I got a couple of days. I'm going to do a special recognition. I know that we have a bunch of firefighters all here. I feel like you're the curious of the list one on the night, but I would like to. For you to recognize as a group. Uh, why don't we have each, all of them stand up and, and state the name of which department they're with? Start with Perry back there in the corner. Yeah, Perry Davis, Southern Road Fire Department. John Martin, Southern Road Fire Department. Judge Starr, Southern Road Fire Department. Huey Hood, Cajun Fire Department. Uh, Kevin Ortiz, with it. Jimmy Hensley, Road Fire Department. Yes, but then lady back there, you get all seen? I, I am. I'm Perry Davis' wife. I'm Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> She's our cook. <laughs> <laughs> That's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, we have uh, three big public periods. I know one of them y'all really looking forward to. This. The first one is the Community Development Block Grant Clearwater Project Close That Hall. Is that coming up on there? I'm not Paula. I'm filling in for Paula tonight. That's fine. Well, she can help. Okay. <laughs> um, then on behalf of Isothermal Planning Development Commission, I want to thank the board for allowing us to work with you on this project. 
It was a very interesting project, and, and we really enjoyed it and appreciate both of this. Um, the purpose of this hearing is to receive comments from area citizens concerning the county closing out the Clearwater Paper Project, um, CDG number 0982081. Cleveland County was previously awarded a million, one million dollars of community development block grant funds in the economic development category from the North Carolina Department of Commerce. The funds were used to assist Clearwater Paper Incorporated with street improvements, other public facilities, and for the planning of the application and administration of the project. Companies located in Shelby, North Carolina County has expended all CDPG funds, and as a result of this assistance, the company has created over 218 jobs. Um, so tonight we request action to close out the project. Is there any questions? No questions. I see. Uh, we just need the data. We just need the announcement that we have to come to the public hearing. So, any questions for the public hearing? At this time, uh, we'll move Agreement between Cleveland County and Project Known. I do want to reiterate um, 
that this is still a competitive project, thus the need to refer to it by the code name project known. They are still examining other other locations, so um, we will continue to refer to it by code name throughout this contract. I want the commissioners um, to be aware that the employment and capital investment projections have slightly been modified since we advertised um, in the paper. They've changed just slightly from what was published, um, but you should have the most updated version in your packets for review. We are really, really excited about this manufacturing project. And as the contract outlines, this project would create approximately 90 new, 94 new full-time jobs over the next three years and would make a capital investment of approximately $4.9 million. There is just great potential long-term investment, long-term growth for this financially stable company. <clears throat> and we anticipate increased tax revenue that shall be generated by this additional new capital investment um, that this company will be making as they complete the project. The contract between the county and project manager stipulates the company shall comply with employment capital investment projections as it is outlined in this document. And this company fully acknowledges that these incentives will serve as an inducement for the company to expand and operate in Cleveland County. This contract states that the grant term shall continue for five years following initial, ver following initial verification as long as the grant criteria remain satisfied. The annual incentive grant payment to the company shall be after the company has fully paid their property taxes every year and will be 60% of the county general ad valorem taxes on real personal property taxes for five years. The company again is fully aware that should they not meet the grant criteria as is stated in this document or fail to pay their property taxes, then the county does have the right to fully terminate this agreement and have no further obligation to the company. Are there any questions about this agreement? Thank you guys again, I appreciate it. At this time, we will the public hearing open. Anyone wish to speak for or uh, against the project loan? Step forward at this time. Just put your name and your address. My name is Michael Persson. I reside at 107 Cameron Drive in Kings Mountain. I'm the president of the Dan Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to echo a few of the comments that Christian just made. The fact that we do appreciate the support that the Cleveland County Commission gives for the economic development. You folks step out front, you make things happen, and we certainly do appreciate it. You have been a blessing to this community. I'd also like to say that I would like to ask you to approve this incentive grant tonight. We've got 96 new jobs being created, $4.9 billion in capital investment, and that, as Commissioner Hutchins says, is a win win for everyone. So we certainly do appreciate that. Uh, we continue to move onward and upward. We cut that uh, unemployment rate slightly, and with uh, announcements such as tonight, we'll continue to cut into that unemployment rate. So we'll continue to give our citizens jobs. So, on behalf of the 600 chamber members, we urge you to pass this incentive program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone wish to speak for or against Boston? No. My name is Robert Williams. I live in Austin, next to the schoolhouse and the big wood pile. I think all of you pretty much know where I live. Uh, I'd like to thank David Deer for taking Hal and I around a little bit at the Foot uh, Hills Conference Center uh, Friday. The clear water paper project is impressive. And, and I kind of like seeing that. I, I've done a lot of big projects in my career, and that you can tell what I'm looking That's good. Uh, I do have a bit of a complaint, again, about not having access to whatever package you guys are looking at. Uh, I like to see those things, so I like to know what you guys are seeing. From, from what I can tell, and we notice and what I just heard and what I read in the newspaper about about Project Known uh, is nowhere in, in, the, in the near vicinity of the class project that 
could have worked back to the city. I mean, just the, just the fact that the average salary is going to be like $21,000, and the average Cleveland County salary is $32,000, that's a big, big step down in salaries. If you take a few supervisors, a handful of supervisors, one handful of supervisors with relatively good salaries, everybody else is making minimum wage. So this is this is not, in my way of thinking, a plumb project that Cleveland County would like to have a lot of. I mean, we, we, we need to find jobs for people that have skills commensurate with the minimum wage, but we need to set our goals a little higher also. So, and that being said, we do need, we do need jobs. So I'm not against this project, but I, I believe we need to cast our nets a little bit higher uh, as we go. We've got, we've got more room at the Foothills Conference Center. If we need to open another uh, industrial park, maybe we've got plenty of room up, up around Falls, and we can stand a job up there too. So, again, I would like to see these packages. I'd like to see what you guys are looking at and what kind of decisions you're making so I can, you know, I've got an opinion and, and uh, I'd like to express it more than just you. And, and also regarding expressing opinions, uh, what I said about this project, if you will go to Facebook, and even I, I hate saying this, these two words together, the Shelby Star, if you look at Shelby Star article about this project, if you look at the comments people are making on Facebook, they're mild compared to what I just said. My comments were mild compared to what they said. And I made a copy of those things. And I like to give them to Jerry and let her make a copy that you guys see what other people in this county are looking at. They're thinking. And I don't see anybody else in here saying that, but this is this is not a proper project. So that's all I have to say. Anyone who would like to speak for or against the possible nominees? Anyone who should speak for or against? Here is your other comment. Chris, can I let him speak for my comment? Say I appreciate your, your comments. I thought it might be um, wise just to add a little more commentary associated with this project. I think the important thing to note when we are working on economic development projects, you know, projects that we are working on, the diversity that you see among the projects are pretty phenomenal. You have companies that are looking to create jobs that start out at seventy-five to $85,000. That would be the Facebooks and the Apples and the Googles and the AT&Ts that we've recruited. And you also have some other manufacturers whose wages are not going to be up to par. The issue that persists in our county is that people need jobs. And they need all types of jobs here. So we feel that this project is very substantial. 94 new jobs is better than zero new jobs. What we are proposing with commission, what we are proposing to the commissioners is relatively small in the grand scheme of things in terms of, of incentives. And the beauty about the incentive packages that the commissioners put together and that they approve is that they are completely performance based. That, that allows us to protect the taxpayers. The company must pay their property taxes in order to receive anything back. This company is a good company. They're creating quality jobs, and while the average salary may be a little bit lower than what we would prefer, they offer substantial benefits. And I can tell you there are a lot of people out there that would 
would be joking to have a job rather than sitting at home with that. So for us, this project is just as important as the Clearwater Papers, just as important as the at and So we feel like it is in our best interest to accommodate them and to give them support. They could have chosen and still have the option to choose many other locations in the United States or abroad. Concern, but 
it does have good benefits. And as I said earlier, I think in economic development projects, you've got to diversify and look at uh, the makeup of your labor force and try to attract projects that will meet all facets of that labor force. And I think this project does meet some of the facets of our labor force. And we have a, um, Robert, I can appreciate what you're saying too, and we all have the, the goal of having the high paying salaries, um, skilled jobs. Um, we have a, a, a large group in the community that don't have jobs, and those people would probably enjoy having that job. And it also gives them an opportunity to get to be skilled, be a stepping stone to another high, higher paying job that they may not have that opportunity with right off the bat. So. You know, it doesn't hurt us to have some some jobs of that nature, even though it's not maybe our ideal jobs that we want. And, and like Commissioner um, Colbert just said, that we have done a very good job, the economic development group, I give you, uh, commend you on the job that you have brought into our community. And sometimes there are some that we, opportunities that open up that um, we need those jobs as well. And we, we, need, we need more people in the workforce. I like to say, I like to say, um, I mean, I appreciate uh, all comments that were made. Um, Trims, I, I uh, appreciate you saying that if you were in our seat, probably would do the same thing, uh, approve it if, if we do approve it. Um, but I think the, the, the big thing on this, our economic development team is, is working hard to provide opportunities for our residents that we don't have to take them. But these jobs are going to be there. They're going to be somewhere. This is just another place where they can come to work. Uh, people can go to work and they can have benefits and they can have uh, self-esteem and, and uh, I, I commend our, our team for doing that. Uh, Y'all done a good job. Um, of course, we'd like to have high-paying jobs here. Everybody would like to have those, uh, but it takes all kind. We're, we're becoming more diversified based uh, by the efforts of our, our economic development group. Uh, so I appreciate what you're doing. And uh, I'll finish it up with Robert. Thank you very much for speaking with us. I know the real big question back there is the information prior to. And I may be wrong on my part and what I'm getting ready to say, but this just is how I feel. We have an economic development team. My appointee is Commissioner Holt. And um, what I have asked in the past is that I not be told anything that's going on in economic development as to the what is taking place in, in that arena and how they're developing this project. When I first hear about it is when I do the agenda. So I've got a few days there. I wait and listen to what Christian has to say, what Eddie has to say before I make my judgment. But I have asked repeatedly County manager can tell you, commissioners can tell you, I have asked repeatedly, do not tell me what this project can tell because if I don't know, I can't put it out into the public. I cannot make comments on it until it comes to fruition. So on my part and on your part, uh, I know where you stand that you want that information advanced, but I've asked not to be told because what I do not know, I cannot leak. And we got a team out there that's working on this. They are a good team, and I do, but I do respect you asking the question on it. But uh, you're getting your information pretty much within a few days of what I'm getting. And, uh, and I'm, I think that all I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you as seriously as I'm sitting here. That you go from the manager, you go to the commissioner, and they will tell you our EDC team puts these things together, and then they inform us coming and uh, like I say this is uh, conducive to the uh, unemployment rate and, and that's a lot of what we're about. Uh, thank you for support and uh, thank you for going around David, bless your heart. You had to put up David for well, I don't know about a couple hours. But anyway. Well, uh, you know, yeah. I, think, I think what Rob was referring to and that is available after we receive our package that we've got here Tell us a little bit about it. He's on the sunshine list, doesn't he? Yeah, let me explain to you 
um, that legal ad needed to be put in the paper 10 days prior to today. Um, so we put the legal ad in the paper with, with slightly different numbers. Um, when we sent out the agenda with the actual incentive agreement, it had the new numbers in the public. It's on our website, so what they saw is what the public saw. It was only that the legal ad had to be put in 10 days ago, and those numbers really didn't get firmed up until the middle of last week. So everything that the public, that the commissioners saw uh, regarding this project, the public saw also. Just so you know. It was just a slight change of numbers within that 10 days to the middle of last week. Anyone wishes to speak for the get the flag? No, we wouldn't All right, look, it's good. Any other discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Aye. 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 I move. Make a motion to approve that motion from last year. Second. 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 Uh, any other discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. And everybody. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. 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 Thank has uh, worked on this one and has come up with a balanced budget for us. It is our county manager, David Beard, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the process began probably back in, in February, and uh, the U.S. Board of Commissioners had uh, several work sessions and public meetings working on that even before I, I came back uh, in the fall in the early part of May. So we've been working on it down to detail for quite some time, therefore I'm not going to go back and then go into a lot of detail. I'm going to get the highlights and go through it from a high level here and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, we're presenting to you tonight a balanced budget with no reduction in services from county funded programs. The county general property tax rate remains the same at 57 cents per $100 of valuation. Countywide school supplemental tax remains the same at 15 cents per $100 of valuation. We recommend that the county volunteer fire service district tax be increased from 3 cents to 5 cents per $100 of valuation. We also recommend that the number 7 volunteer fire service district be increased from 3 cents to 4 cents. This is based upon a recommendation from their board of directors. We recommend the landfill fee schedule be amended based on professional actuarial studies that were done, changing the annual household fee for convenience center usage from $50 to $62. The landfill tipping fee be adjusted from $33 per ton to $37.65 per ton. The household fee has not been increased since its inception over 20 years ago. The emergency medical fee schedule is also amended to keep current with the applicable federal reimbursement rates. We are recommending a 2% cost of living allowance for all county employees. This is the first salary increase for county employees since the economic recession began back in 2008. Uh, retirement system rates have been uh, increased by 0.32% uh, or roughly one third of 1% due to actuarial adjustments by the state treasurer's office. Employer paid individual health insurance rates will increase by 8%. County general fund contributions to Cleveland County Schools are reduced by approximately $558,000. This is due to a reduced student population. This leaves the school funding rate per pupil at the same level as it was this current fiscal year. Federal and state mandated social services program costs are increased by $455,000. County general fund support of workers' compensation is increased by $210,000 due to increased claims activities. Law enforcement and detention center operations are increased by $172,000. That's net of employee costs. Emergency medical service operations are increased by $123,000. That's also net of employee costs. Uh, in summary, the costs for public safety, human services, and education tend to increase 
in times of economic downturn like we are in now. But thanks to the foresight and excellent leadership from our Board of Commissioners, Cleveland County has been able to maintain an excellent level of service throughout the whole economic downturn without a tax rate increase for many, many years. We continue to be physically diligent and work hard to make Cleveland County a better place to live in spite of the economics that we have. As you can see here, this is a pie chart for our Cleveland County revenues. And this is a combination of both the, the primary fund, uh, general fund tax rate, and the county school tax rate. Um, we tried to put them all together to show where the total taxes go. And as you can see there, property taxes are 71.2% of our total revenue. That's, that's more in one pot than we'd like to see, but unfortunately, our revenue streams are limited by the state of North Carolina, and we work with what we've got to work with. Uh, you can see that our sales taxes are about 13%. Um, permits, fees, and interest come in just about 10%, and federal, state, and, and local funds of, of a, other nature are about 3%. Uh, going over to the expenditure side of things, you can see that uh, education takes in about one third of all the monies that are generated here locally. Public safety comes in at about 25%. Human services is about 16%. Those three items are the vast majority of the reason the county government exists is to provide, to provide those services to the citizens at local level. And we think that our department heads and employees provide an excellent service to the citizens of Cleveland County. And that in a nutshell, Commissioner, is your county budget for 2013 2014. Thank you, David. Uh, commissioners, at this time, I'll take a question to the county manager. Uh, uh, the budget that you would like to make comments on. Um, and um, I'd ask the clerk if she would just keep the expenditure side. At this time, Commissioner, any comments about the budget that you'd like to make? Our questions of Mr. Deer. Hearing none, at this time we will declare a public hearing open. Anyone wish to speak for or against the budget 2013 2014? The budget has been given to the public since June 6. It has been placed in strategic locations around the county. Uh, anyone has had an opportunity to come speak to county manager or any county commission about the budget. At this time, uh, anyone who would like to speak for or against the proposed budget 2013-2014, please come up and state your name and the address.
So if you wanted to look at the bulk of fire protection, that would be a fully paid service. And that might, you can just look simply here where we're at night to see the shelf. City of King Mountain, smothered around Far City, terrible. Uh, all the way to Far Charlotte, because that's kind of an anomaly that's too big. But the, the local municipalities around, their budgets are probably, I would say Cherubles is probably 900000 Shelves is probably three and a half million or better. But what I want to speak to you briefly about is that the, at the current rate, and what we're asking for this funding is the minimal cost or the cost of doing business. It's the cost of building fire stations, putting the fire apparatus in their stations, buying turnout gear, buying pagers, buying equipment that the firefighters need. That fire protection is provided this county at 100% free when it comes to labor. And that labor is what's important. I'll go back to those municipal departments I talked about before. For if you look at any one of those municipal departments, out of every dollar in the budget, 85% of that budget goes to personnel costs. So the remaining 15% or 15 cents out of each one of those dollars spent is what, what I'm speaking to tonight the cost of doing business. So while this, does, this budget does include a tax increase, to simply get to cost of doing business in a simple equation is x has to equal y so it's the cost of that fire protection has to equal what the fire district generates in a fire tax and right now it's less right now the cost of fire protection in this county is less than what that service district is actually generating so that's the, the reason it has to be an increase however we don't protect those volunteers in the days of doing fundraisers are gone they're, they're not coming back um, these guys can go out not even from your days of, of, of working there we would work all day 12 hours and then a thousand dollars. If they have a thousand dollars of money, buy seven turn here. It might buy three papers. Look, probably two, two. So the, the, we can't ask these guys and gals to do that anymore. We need them trained. We need them ready to answer calls. The call volume of Waco when I joined in 1984 was about 75 calls a year. Or year. Now it's probably close to 400. So they have all they can do, not only with the things that's required to do the home. To just do the training that's required and answer the fire calls and risky calls. And they don't have the time for, for the training for the fundraisers. And even if they did, they're not mad enough to even make it work for a while. We really need those guys. So, what the message I wanted to get across tonight is if we don't protect those volunteers, we can't afford the fire protection in this county if it goes full pay. There's also a statutory requirement for not fire protection. Fire, these fire protection districts, whether they're rural or service, can only have a 15 cent fire tax. This is going from three to five, caps 15 cent. If you ask me tonight what it would cost for, to put full paid staffs in these nine fire departments, it'd be over $15 million. If you paid them, plus what we're asking you to do tonight. If you took the fire tax at 15 cent, they'd correct me if I'm wrong, but if you took this fire tax at 15 cent, the service district would only generate five and a half, six million dollars. We couldn't afford the fire tax. So two things have to happen if you have a fully paid. If we lost all the volunteers that were fully paid, first thing you have to do is we'd have to restructure the fire parks in, in the county. And then, then that tax rate would go to 15 cents, or the county would have to absorb that as, as a full-fledged department and fund it out of the general athletic tax. There's a whole two ways to do that. What I'm trying to say to you is we have to do everything possible to shore up the volunteers and keep them as long as possible. And the way to do that is to fund them on an appropriate level where they can go out and provide the services that we've all come to expect since this fire service district was generated in the 70s and these fire pumps first became charters in the 40s and 50s. Uh, the, late, the late 40s and early 50s. The biggest thing that they're facing today is a way to take care of volunteers and also to build fire stations. I know you guys have heard me say this before. These fire pumps were chartered in the 50s and 60s so that all those stations are 50 years old or better. That's about the life of a fire station. Buying a fire truck is tough. The payments on a fire truck is tough. But the payments on a million and a half dollars is even tough. And it's a long period of time to pay that back. So the capital problems that these departments that are facing in the near future, I have some pretty large debt associated with those. They can't make it. They can't build buildings, buy fire trucks, and buy the equipment that Jimmy's going to talk to you about at the current fund level. It's just not a fund. One plus one is equal to two. So I wanted to say that. And then one other thing I wanted to mention is there are some large issues that we also are going to face uh, at the state level. There's a group in Raleigh that works with, that's part of the state legislature called Program Evaluation Division. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with them or not. Um, but it's sort of like the fiscal research section, and they do research. Well, they've been tasked to look at all the fire rescue programs in the state of North Carolina, what's funded and what's provided for us 
uh, General Assembly. So there's one report due to them in October. There's another one to do in December. There's certain legislators in Raleigh that want to do away or drastically change some of the programs that we use. We use a volunteer safety workers' comp fund to pay our workers' comp insurance. That's under fire. They may do away with that. If they do, our workers' comp will go five times what it is today. Our workers' comp today is $2,000, per department. If we go to general risk pool, those premiums will go over $10,000. They'll be between ten dollars and $12,000 per department. So that's what we're face. Uh, they're also looking at the the grant program. A lot of us are subsidizing our equipment that we buy with the state prior history grants because we buy them in half. It's, it's a 50 cent. It's a dollar for dollar, dollar program. So if we're going to buy equipment in a year, we're going to buy $30,000 worth of replacement equipment, then why not apply for a grant and buy it at half cost? We pay $15,000 in the state fees. pays $15,000. We're also looking to do away with that grant program. And we're also looking at a way to do away with our pension and the relief fund, which uh, pays for short term uh, expenses in the case of a line of duty injury. I'll stop at this point, I'll let these guys talk, and then I'll close it out in one short statement. Good evening. I'm Jenny Hensel. I'm with the Grove Volunteer Fire Department, and this is actually my 30th year serving the citizens of Grove. Uh, two thirds of my entire life has been riding yellow fire trucks. So uh, thank you for the opportunity, Commissioner's Manager, to speak to you tonight. Uh, I want to elaborate on some of the things that Kevin mentioned as far as numbers, statistics, where we are today as, as where we uh, post where we were in the early 90s and some a little older than that. But I want to frame this around something that's going on right now. Right now in Charleston, South Carolina, today is the sixth anniversary of the SOPA Superstore fire that claimed nine Charleston firefighters. As we speak tonight, there's a memorial service being held on the site to commemorate and remember those uh, firefighters who gave off. So it does help us to have a reality check to grasp what is, this is more than numbers. This is much more than numbers. We're out here doing a real, a real service to the community, a real job that is really a dangerous job. It does not matter if you volunteer or 40 years in a career department. It doesn't matter. North Carolina lost a very young firefighter last week who was electrocuted in Wilkes County while investigating an active fire. He was in his early 20s with a small child. So there is no discriminatory factor for these incidents. But I bring that to your attention just to remind everyone just you know, what these folks do on a day-to-day -day basis. Cleveland County has 330 volunteers actively in the fire service today. There's 448 firefighters in the county overall, including municipalities. But as far as volunteers, which I'll speak mostly on today, there's 330. As Kevin said, we transitioned from the 50s and 60s from one and two bay fire stations that may have been sheds and barns or whatever else it may have been to accommodate a new and real fire service in our communities to massive stations that you would see in some of the ones that have been recently built. Uh, some of the beautiful stations you've seen in Focal and, and Number 3 area. Uh, we, have to accommodate, we have to have these fire stations to accommodate the vehicles, the sizes, the numbers of vehicles that have grown based on our mission that has also grown. We have uh, bumpers, brush units, rescue vehicles, aerial devices, specialty rescue vehicles, you name it. You see the news, you see all the different events that's going on and probably going on right now with the, with the water conditions outside. We have to be prepared for that. There's nobody else for us to call. So these things come at a cost, and not just an initial cost of purchasing, but a cost of upkeep and a training mechanism that goes along with it. The service district in Cleveland County is made up of Bethlehem, Bowling Springs, Kayser, Cleveland, Grover, Oak Grove, Pocal, Shanghai, and Waco departments. Together we protect 44,429 citizens in our primary coverage areas and approximately 317 square miles of the 466 in the county. In addition, most of the service district, if not all, provides mutual or automatic aid to all these municipalities. So in effect, we're covering the entire county in a large respect with volunteer service. In 2012, the service district, these nine departments responded to 2,636 calls. And like Kevin mentioned, I do remember the early days in Grover that we would run 40 or 50 calls a year, and now we're 250 to 300. So it has increased significantly, and, and we don't see any downturn in that. Just a few cost comparisons to frame this for you. Radios, the old VHF brick radios that I know Ron remembers really well, and everybody, you know, trying to lean to one side when you carry it. Those Tailor cost roughly 500 bucks back in you know 1990-ish in that area. 
Today, 3,000 to 3,500, as I know you're aware, with the 800 radios that we're all required to carry now. And I want to say, you know, at this moment, a lot of people in this room probably don't remember, but when the fire service was able to go to 800, it was largely to do the Kevin's work on the, on the federal grant. The grant he mentioned, we would still wouldn't be there had it not been for that grant money. So we're, we're grateful for that. Turn out here to outfit one firefighter, $1,300 in 1990, $3,000 in 2013. A pumper truck in 1990, $150,000 was about an average price. In 2012, $400,000 plus the equipment, which is an additional 50 to 100,000. just depends on what kind of equipment you put on it. And that is mandated equipment for ISO rating. Airbags, we call it SCBA. Uh, $2,100 in 1990, $5,800 right now. These are just changes that have occurred not only in technology, but in uh, committees and things that are added to these airbags for safety and for other reasons. But we don't have any choice in that. And the final number that I want to give you is probably the most staggering number that will hit home to everyone in this room, fuel costs. In 1995, this, this data is from the U.S. Energy Information Administration today, uh, $1.10 per gallon in 1995 for diesel fuel, which all of our vehicles run that. The average now is $3.96, sometimes higher than that. We're fortunate we get our gas across the line where our fuel works a lot cheaper, but most, you know, most people are paying a good bit more than that. So you can see just the call volume as opposed to, or in conjunction with the fuel costs, where we stand today. Training hours for volunteers. Firefighter 1 and 2 is 345 hours. Technical rescuer is 141 hours. EMT, if the department chooses to have EMTs, is an additional 200 hours. So that's 686 hours straight in the door in the first couple of years that a volunteer will commit to at zero pay, obviously. And then anywhere from 36 to 100 hours annually to maintain their volunteer status, their active status. And when I was talking about fuel costs, we, we figure out a way to put fuel in the fire trucks. But these volunteers are driving their own personal vehicles a lot, daily, running errands, running fire calls, doing training, whatever that may be. The only help that they get is a 14 cent um, per mile of claim on the federal taxes for actually running calls. That's very little. That actually doesn't cost. That is not you know, covering your actual cost. So these people put this money in out of the pockets and don't, don't really question it at all. The National Volunteer Fire Council says that since 1984, volunteerism has declined in the United States by 18%. In 1984, there were 897,000 volunteers, and in 2011, 756,000. Now what this means is, I know that's, that's national, it's hard to wrap your arms around that, but when these numbers decrease, the volunteers, the pay staff increases. And you can see that in our state, counties next to us, and all across the country. We still have to have the same number of firefighters. It just depends on whether you have to pay them or not. So these numbers are staggering in what the cost could be. Uh, most of the time, the, the decline in volunteerism is due to multiple jobs. People have so many things they have to do. They're working two or three jobs. They just don't have time for it anymore. And we tend to train these folks for five or 10 years from their teens to their early 20s. And then when they get families and all these jobs, we lose so that's what we're trying to, to keep as well. During this time frame, uh, volunteers decreased the cost for service from 11.89 million, or excuse me, the cost for service was 11.8 million nationally to 30 million in 2011. Um, the National Volunteer Fire Council does put a number on a volunteer. And like Kevin mentioned a while ago, $15 million is what it would cost to operate a career service. Roughly $45,000 per firefighter is the figure cost. The training value, Training value is huge. These folks are also training for nothing, lots of training. Just for an example, and I, I work for the college, so this is an easy example for me to draw on, but the Cleveland County Fire Rescue College, uh, we bring in over 700 volunteers. Not only is that a, for the weekend school, not only is that a big impact for these people getting their training, it's a huge impact for the economy of Cleveland County to fill all the hotels and the restaurants on an annual basis. So we're, we take great pride in that as well. State of North Carolina provides a big exemption for firefighters and rescue workers for training. So we don't have to pay for that. If we were, it would cost the county roughly $396,000 a year just for the training to maintain the fire service. And finally, what I want to mention is uh, when well-equipped, readily trained firefighters are ready for service and responded in an adequate manner, like Kevin mentioned, with modern equipment and able to put out the fires quicker, we keep business open, we keep people paying taxes, and we keep people employed. 
So that's a huge thing that we want to mention as well. Our service district protects 27,036 taxable structures in Cleveland County. And we strive to make sure that we can meet those response time goals and not just go and put the water on what's left. Cleveland County is very well represented at the state level in every aspect of fire protection. Uh, Kevin is a big part of that, working through the State Farmers Association. And that's why we're here tonight to ask you for support for the fire tax increase. And again, a thank you for your time. Good evening, Commissioner. My name is Joe Starnes. I'm a transplant. I chased a grandbaby to New York County in 2008. We caught it, too, by the way. And she is the life of my life. I'm here to talk to you. I'm 35 years in the fire service. And I'm here to talk to you tonight about the community aspect in Oak Grove Fire Department. I joined Oak Grove with Chief Davis. And I want to talk a little bit about, let's just share a story. And then that story we'll talk about how that community is connected to that fire department and how what it means. To Mrs. Smith, we use her as a customer for a second. We'll talk about Mrs. Smith and how we you know, are connected to her, how we know the community, how we open the doors to the community. And that is a volunteer system, and that's so critical. Dr. Deming, who was a famous statistician who created some, some wonderful things for us in Ford Motor Company, he helped them a lot. And one of the things he said was, one of the most important numbers you'll have is the ones that are unknowable. And I think that's what we're going to talk about a little bit. So let's tell a story. Imagine this 9.30 Tuesday morning. One of the hardest things to do, Chiefs, is to get volunteers on the business daytime hour. So we have to work. We have to staff a lot to get a few. So statistically, we want 30-something full, fully fledged or equipped firefighters so we could show nine of them in, in Monday, on Tuesday morning at 9.30. The say that Mrs. Smith has a kitchen fire, and tragically, she calls 911, and the communications in Cleveland County dispatches Oak Grove, Waco, and Bethlehem. What we get out of that is Oak Grove will, be, will respond with a minimum of two fire engines. Those engines you, you articulated at $400,000 apiece. Waco will come with another engine. That then will come with another. So now we have four engines. They'll bring four people, maybe three people. That's 16 people we have there. 16 people who responded now with, well, what we say, a million and a half dollars worth of rolling stock that's there. Oak Grove, for instance, is on a 20 year rotation due to ISO. We have a 6 9 rating. So we, got, we have those engines on a 20 year life cycle management program. So approximately every six, seven years, you have to buy an engine. You have to capitalize that out to 50,000 or plus a, a year to do that, if you're going to stay ahead of that. Today, Go Grow's capital debt, which is, we've been behind since uh, uh, the capitalization of uh, trying to build, we built a beautiful station, retorted now, did a lot of work. Chief Davis and the team actually recycled every piece of it steel and everything out of that. Some of you were at the uh, grand opening and we appreciate you for that. So when we get to Mrs. Smith's structure, we'll stick three people on, on the scene. They're going to grab an inch and three quarter line to pass that line to the, to, the, to the kitchen area of the home. To do that, the value of that team is greater than $25,000 a year long. Just three people. Look to a hose line that's about eleven or twelve hundred dollars, and that's just one line because that's the cost of the line. They have to be trained and skilled and set up for that. They'll carry a thermal imaging camera to be able to see infrared to see hot spots. That camera is twelve thousand plus. That's just the cost of doing business. So for us to be safe, for us firefighters to be skilled, they have to bring the tools and the training to that. So. They set up this, this attack. We just roll, we have to roll 3,500 gallons of water to that instance to maintain our ISO rate. So we got four engines, we got 1,000 gallons on each engine. We just put 4,000 gallons of water there. We may or may not have a hydrant. To put a hydrant in in Oak Rose District is an extra $2,600 if we decide to augment the system in some way. We, the story continues. We, we, we meet with Mrs. Smith. 
We meet with people we know. We, we, we try to reconnect the customer back to, the, to their lives because we know those customers typically. And when, and when we have trouble with those customers, there's no more, there's no more compassion and patient people than people who are neighbors to who you are. And I think that's an unmeasurable. For instance, when Waco gets there, our, our Bethlehem bill support the extinguishment and the support the salvage and overhaul. The ability to prevent photo damage, to stop that fire and do that. So all those things are a part of the customer service that the community brings when the when the volunteers come to that to that call. So what does it take? We talked about yeah, every five years Oak Grove has to replace five SCBA. If they have 15 breathing packs or air packs, a life cycle management, the, the, a good business cycle says you don't buy all those at one time. Buy them as, as in a life cycle management program. Buy them by the engines that way, buy the hose that way. We need, we need four times those nine firefighters we just described on that first alarm just to be able to make sure we have enough people there. And we put the gear we talked about the price of the gear. So it, it takes, in addition, Oak Road estimated last year over 1,500 fundraising hours given by the volunteers. Um, so, and, and you talk about the price of gas and the services operating. Uh, we're operating on the same rate we've been operating on for a long time. And I'm going to cut this really short to get back to uh, Kevin. And here's the, here's the number I think that makes the most sense to me. There's 8,760 hours in a year. If you take that 8,760 hours, and you divide that by what we're asking for, for Oak Road, for instance, that budget, that capital and expense overhead to our community is $23 an hour total. I think that's a pretty good pie. Thank you for your time and appreciate you very much. Kevin, you want to sign up your comment? You want to sign up your comment? Yeah, yeah, I'll just take just one second. Um, as fiduciaries of the county's budget, you guys have an immense task before uh, ahead of you and we uh, appreciate we appreciate that and we respect your position whatever that may be i think we've outlined what what needs to happen and uh if there's more information that's needed we will be gladly to uh, prepare that and get it for you and this is on this only scratch the surface of, of what is ahead of the fire services of this county and state and and throughout um jimmy spoke about serving on the state association so routinely get across the state to see this other places as well. So this is nothing new. I mean, it's happened all over. I did I did print off one article. And I apologize. I didn't have the resources to hold the copy of this. I will give it to Carrie and if you guys would like a copy of it. I guess you'll make a copy for that. I printed off one article and this comes from the news and record of um, I guess it's out of Greensboro. This sits in this store in this article sits in uh, Guilford County. Um, but there's a whole list of counties across the state that's going through the same thing. Uh, while it's a budget issue here, this, this sits in Somerville, but it's also lack of volunteers and all of them do it, so they're going to have to find another way to do that. But the county commissioner there, and I'll let you guys read this. I will broadcast for everybody his political affiliations, but I'll let you guys read that. Uh, he says that uh, these are the people in the community who answer the call when there's an emergency. We have to give them what they need to do their job. Uh, so. I'll stop at that and then take any questions that you guys may have. Okay. At this time, anyone from the commission to speak for or against the person at this time to set forth? Anyone speak for or against the person to set forth? Okay. Questions about uh, <coughs> my county manager, or if you'd like to make any uh, comments about the budget, or if you have any questions that we want to make a presentation. You want to go up top? I will start. I'll make the first comment. I appreciate the uh, information from the fire service. You're dealing mm -hmm. with them the most of it. We're probably way behind the eight ball. Just on several other things, and I think that y'all 
know we can't get caught up over not this is just a slight measure in doing it it's also in putting the money for the people serve basically it's not for other services or particular services that uh, that they deserve most of my time with the rescue squad that they're just about a dead thing in the past for the same reason like a volunteer and so much training mandated from the state that the people who have record jobs can't do the mandated training and the one that does the training said hey why not get paid for the service so we're very really fortunate that we have the volunteers in the county you know, that, that we do it also comment on the increase giving fees to the landfill and so forth most people don't know the landfill is a separate MC. It operates on its own money. It doesn't operate on tax dollars. As everyone knows, that the other businesses, since the economy is hit, they've had to increase fees on account of <coughs> fuel. Different things come up in their business. This major thing is ours that we're looking at. Is 20 years down the road, it's going to need 20 million dollars close the landfill up. If we don't act responsible now and start preparing for it, 20 years down the road, somebody's going to get hit with a big, big tax increase from the public. And my figure is the people who use it, let them pay for the fees to close it because, you know, they're, they're taking the track into it. So now that's my opinion. So I think that these two things that uh, we've got before us is really a must if we're looking down the road to the future. So many times even our state and federal government has kicked the kids down the road to all of us know. That's why we've got a big deficit in the federal government. We've got problems with the budget in the state and that's one thing that I'm looking for that not only for me but for my children and grandchildren not to saddle them with a big burden is we have to by going in and doing something now that can protect him in the future. Mr. Chair, uh, <clears throat> I can relate to Mrs. Smith as a nine year old. Uh, my mother woke me up on a early one morning and uh, we lost everything we had as a family to the fire. Uh, I can, I can Test to see my grandfather about to lose his life fighting the fire, trying to save us our belongings, which we saved none. Uh, I sympathize with you guys. You know where I stand. Uh, I'm, I'm for this. I'm for it. This is a phase one step toward what needs to be done in this county to make things right <coughs> for the the fire. Uh, I can also say I was in the store few hours before that door went down in Charleston. Uh, I know what I saw and know what families went through in agonized moments. So often we take for granted what should be so dear. And uh, firefighters, uh, EMS uh, fall into that category unfortunately. Where you've been where I've been, you don't know what it means. So I'm with you, I'm for you. Uh, for this county continuing to work hard to make things right for you guys. And I think we'll continue to do that. And I want to thank the county manager and the rest of the commissioners for taking what I think is step one to make your situation better. And I'd like to uh, thank the uh, volunteer firemen that are out there and they're in their, their, their lives on the line out there to service our community and I want to appreciate the uh, leadership that they have I know it's not as easy as it used to be um, for volunteer firemen to be out there to keep them enthused to get them to um, have them out supporting the community um, I know from talking to fire, volunteer firemen and the firemen once it's in your blood that they do Strive to be out there and support our community, but it takes a lot of work because it's not as easy 
getting out of your job, you know, full-time job to run for a fire. So you do have to have the, have the hours banned. And I think that it will not behoove us to take care of what we need out there to service our community because we can't afford the, the um, volunteers that we have out there for those to be paying jobs down the road. We don't do what we need to do to support them and take care of them. We would be in trouble down the road for that. And, you know, I'll, the, I, I commend the um, commissioners that worked real hard on the budget in trying to come to a good conclusion that something that will take care of our community, looking out for our services, looking out for the landfill, looking out for our future because we have so much on the line if we don't look down the road and look at what we need to do for our future and putting the monies in the right place to support the community because that's what we're here for. We appreciate your support as well. Mr. Chair, I'd uh, like to make a couple comments. This is one of those, I've, I've said before, this is, uh, in my opinion, the most important, one of the most important meetings we have all year is discuss our county budget. And uh, there's a lot of emotion involved in this one for me. I've got a lot of friends that are on the volunteer fire department. Uh, some of my lifelong friends that I've, I've, I've known growing up. And, uh, so it has been a, a very tough, um, review of the budget this year. And if, with your indulgence, I'd like to read off, because I'm going to leave the motion out of it, and read off what I, about the 15th version of this short thing I'm going to read here. Um, first, I want to thank the county manager and, uh, and finance department staff for putting uh, so much time in the budget. Um, I know it wasn't easy at all. Our county budget should reflect our priorities. While this budget goes a long way to that end, there are some serious concerns that I have. We still have so many people in our county out of work, others struggling to make ends meet, and parents and grandparents concerned about the direction of every level of government and how it will affect their families. This budget is asking more of Cleveland County families at a time when many can't afford them. I support our volunteer firemen, our fire departments, um, and would support an increase in the tax rate if we would agree to decrease our tax rate by the same amount. Um, However, even though we are considering a decrease in our direct funding to the fire departments by $300,000 out of our general taxes, now that money will go to something else. Uh, no cuts in our general tax rate. The same is true with our decreased funding, including county schools by over half a million dollars, mental health by over 150000 or almost $150,000, um, no cuts. Uh, this, county, this county is going to spend a lot more money next year than we did um, this year. Uh, my priorities for our residents are the safety of our residents, um, fire, rescue, and law enforcement, quality schools, infrastructure to allow for businesses to bring quality jobs to our, our area and residents to have services they can depend on. We need quality people providing these services and show our appreciation to them. Uh, that's why I really do appreciate their county employees, uh, what we're doing for them, and that they deserve more than we can afford. The bottom line is this for me. Our families are going to pay higher taxes and fees because of this budget. It goes against my promise to them that put me in this office and against my convictions. And uh, again, I empathize and I would, uh, I would support the increase with the fire tax if we could decrease um, our, our overall budget. Um, sure would. Because these guys are here. My comment basically, I want to throw it out with the uh, uh, dipping the fees. I just want to let everyone know, and I think that it would be an uh, irresponsible act on the part of the county commissioner not to dip the fees and pass it on to future generations of county commissioners uh, and have them come up with a large sum of money to reach out the landfill in the future when we have had a study. We know we should have done it. In the past, and it's time now to uh, pass that tip of fee and move on toward the future so that when we do reach that point, uh, we will have funds to make sure that our landfill uh, continues for a long period of time. Uh, Dorothea's here and Sam's here. They have worked diligently in, over the past to try to make sure that Cleveland County and Cleveland County citizens basically are protected in the landfill arena for years to come. They've not only acquired property, but they've actually 
ensure the public have a public landfill for many years to come. And again, I think it's irresponsible that we, after having a study done, knowing how much money it would cost <coughs> to close that landfill, or cap it to get another term, uh, by not going ahead and making that decision now and moving forward into the future. On the part of the fire district for the fire taxes, what I would like to say to you guys is at the beginning of this meeting, I asked for the veterans to stand. Well, I equate you guys on a local level as to our national military veterans. And I'd like for you to stand. I'm not to recognize you guys for all the work that you've done. I remember 10 years working for the Teen Mountain Fire Department as a volunteer, and there's nothing, and you, you tell me if I'm not telling the truth, but there's nothing unreal about wearing a Scott air bag in the old days and going into a working fire. It's scary. And people are putting their lives on the line. And every single day, the state's changing the rules. Every day, the increases in the prices of vehicles training is increasing. I remember one time, uh, y'all might remember Johnny Caldwell, uh, he and I were under a deal at King's Mountain and the fire worked hard. The uh, duck work fell down on top of us. We couldn't see anything. The only lesson ever learned in it, all the other guys. But, uh, that's one lesson I still remember. Uh, and the, the one big thing <clears throat> in public safety, whether it be our law enforcement, whether it be our volunteer rescue, or whether it be the fire department. Uh, what I would say to you is, is that if anybody would care to look at the charter of Cleveland County, we are responsible to make sure the public safety in those three arenas. And so, uh, uh, even though I don't like the base taxes, uh, I see the need, I know the need, I need a motion to approve or not approve the budget for Cleveland County 2013 2014. Are there comments? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion for the budget to be approved as presented by the county manager. Motion to approve the 2013 2014 budget. I'll second. I'll second. Commissioner Allen, uh, any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. <laughs> Thank you guys. You don't know how much we appreciate your service. And uh, uh, I say, been there and done that. But uh, it's still our responsibility to make sure we're taken care of. And I uh, hope that this helps a little bit and we can revisit it in the future. Thank you for coming tonight for your comments. Moving to a regular agenda. I'm going to actually ask. Sam will go with the Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to introduce Sam Walker, who is our coordinator of health services, and uh, Tim Allen, who is representative of Republic Services. Now, I think last year I introduced them as two distinguished young gentlemen. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Cindy. I, I got carried away about the distinguished young yeah. <laughs> Cindy Pruitt, yes, she's the landfill manager. Cleveland County awarded Republic Services of North Carolina, which is GDS of Cleveland County, the franchise hauler from July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2017. The Republic Services has requested the following fee increases for fiscal year 2013-2014. The residential curbside pickup. Disposal rate will increase 15% and the service rate will increase 1.9% based on last year's consumer price index. 
The service rate of 1.9% will go directly to Republic Services, which is GPS of Cleveland County. They haven't had a service rate increase in three years. Unlike companies like FedEx and UPS that add on service rates in a surcharge, Republic is unable to do so since the county sets their rates. The disposal rate and the service rate will increase the total monthly rate from $18.36 to $19.15. This is a $0.79 cent increase per month. The second increase is the commercial rate. Disposal rate will increase 15% and service rate will increase 1.9%. This increase will be passed on to, to uh, commercial customers. The pricing depends on the size of the container and the frequency of the service. And the last one is the industrial roll-off. The service rate will increase 1.9% and disposal rate will be determined at the landfill scales by the distance hauled. On February 12, 2013, the Board of Health voted unanimously to increase the solid waste fees and has submitted this request to the any questions? Any questions, This recommendation for the franchise hall rate increase has been approved by the Health Board. Uh, Commissioner Hutchins represents us on that board, and we have uh, a number of individuals here that you can ask questions of. At this time, are there any questions before then? No, I have any questions, but just, just a comment that. Uh, it is a franchise that we grant to the hauler, but it had been open for a different one. It just so happened this is the only hauler that agreed to provide all the services in the contract. That's the reason we wound up with only one franchise hauler because the others didn't want to do household guarding, they didn't want to do roll law, and so forth. So, just, uh, just a little space on it. If you look, the the different use of power is passed on the same charge in, in their budgets to reflect on what we did in the landfill. I have a question. Uh, is the the increase uh, in uh, in part due to the increase in ticking fees that are in the budget? <coughs> we, this, we feel very confident. We're raising the ticking fee at the line with 15%. They should be able to just pass that on. Historically in the past, the county commission has always allowed them to pass on the fees that we increase. Okay. And the other fee, the one point nine, they're asking for uh, based on the same price of that, that which they've not had over three years. At one point nine over three years, it's kind of, it's kind of, we appreciate them going to do the job. I think, uh, Commissioner, that if I read correctly, they uh, see a Shelby increase there's five eight cents offset our Any other questions? I need a motion to approve the franchise hall of rate increase. I'll make a motion to approve the rate increase for franchise hall. Motion to Mr. Hutchins. A second. Commissioner Holder. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Uh, next agenda item is resolution to change meeting date, uh, 4th of July bonus. We've got uh, a change in meeting date to July 9th. Any problems with that, Commissioner? I have a motion to move that to July 9th. Uh, appreciate it. So make the motion. Let's move to July 9th. Commissioner Allen, second. Vice Chair, any discussion? If none, please raise my hand. Uh, there is a need to have a closed session for a legal matter. And let me see here. A uh, closed session discussion legal matter per North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3. Uh, at this time, we're going to close session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.